the heavier snow guys. It's so fascinating to watch the scene behind you. The snow almost kind of looks sideways there on 93 and that's the combination of the heavy snowfall and the gusty winds that by the way are gusting a little over 20 miles per hour in many spots. I would say to this point the winds have almost underperformed a bit and that's probably good news because with the several inches of heavy wet snow plus strong winds we'd probably see a big spike in those number of power outages. Thankfully it has not been so windy to this point but along the coastline it's still possible that some of these gusts here around 20 to 25 miles per hour will ramp up in the coming hours. Would not shock me if we saw a few gusts over 30 maybe even close to 40 along the coastline. Generally wind gusts 20 to 25 miles per hour over the interior with just a few isolated gusts up around 30 and it will stay breezy through tomorrow so the wind doesn't just shut off once the storm pulls away. We'll still see gusts anywhere between 25 and 35 miles per hour throughout the day Wednesday. So we've talked about the snow, the wind. Now let's talk about a couple coastal impacts. There's a coastal flood advisory in effect for uh, right along the seacoast and there's a couple high tide cycles we still have to watch out for. One of them is at five o'clock and then another one tomorrow morning at 530. Now at least by tomorrow morning, the wind direction does start to turn offshore, but currently the wind direction is out of the northeast and with the high tide coming in and just about two hours or so from now, that's going to push some water, especially to some of the low lying areas right along the coastline. Wouldn't shock me if we saw some splash over uh, along Ocean Boulevard at Hampton Beach. Certainly tide levels start to increase here over 11 feet this afternoon and then again tomorrow morning at Hampton Harbor. This is generally a good sign of some splash over, perhaps some minor beach erosion as well as all that water gets pushed up along the coast. But by tomorrow morning, the winds turn more northerly and eventually northwest by tomorrow afternoon. So at that point, the tide cycle should start to return closer to what we would typically see on a Wednesday afternoon high tide. So the good news is that the coast has been largely spared to this point. Just a couple more high tide cycles to get through, but the likelihood of widespread and impactful flooding is probably low at this point. Certainly the heavier snow has been a huge issue over the interior. We've had reports anywhere between one and two feet, especially up in elevation for a closer look at how the storm uh, and when it comes to the snow is performing right now. We'll bring in meteorologist Haley LaPointe. Hi, Matt. You are so right about the winds. We are very lucky that those are not cranking right now to what some of our computer models had been showing. If that had been the case, uh, especially with the weight of the tree limbs right now down because of the snow, the weight is heavy out there. So in Manchester, notice this icon. It is a black cloud with heavy snow. That means it's coming down real heavy at this point, at least at the airport, 35 degrees. So because temperatures are actually even a couple degrees above freezing, that means this snow is water laden, super heavy stuff. These big flakes that is weighing down the trees and the power lines. But look at the winds out of the north about 12 miles per hour. So that's some good news at the airport. Only seeing a few gusts near 20, 25 miles per hour could be far worse. We are watching for that. They could pick up as we continue over the next few hours, but so far so good on that front. Snowfall reports coming into us now. Remember, we get these from people like you. We need actual humans to go out and you know measure in your backyard and and then send us the report of how much you've received. So these are what some of our spotters have been sending us so far. The numbers Washington 22.5 22 inches in Ringe, New Ipswich 20 20 in Lempster and we've got in the rest of the Monadnock region places easily over a foot of snow and remember some of those are now dated and we continue to see snowfall rates of an inch per hour in a lot of communities. So a lot of those numbers are probably even a bit higher. So the travel impacts if you do have to be out you just need to give yourself plenty of time. For me, it took me like two hours to go somewhere that it normally takes about 20, 25 minutes. So just be prepared for sloppy road conditions. Also something I noticed, you could actually see power lines sagging, you know, low on the roadways. You could see trees that have fallen, debris in the roadways. So travel impacts high, not just because of, of course, the sloppy conditions with the snow, but also just due to other hazards that are going on right now. This evening, high impact, hopefully by tomorrow morning with the snow slowing down. We're more in the medium threat and then a much lower impact by the second half of the day tomorrow because the snow will be long gone. It's just the residual cleanup or whatever is left on the roadways at that point. Look at this. There's just this plume of moisture that has been coming off of the ocean from this system. You can see these heavier bands that have just been moving across the southern part of the state and in particular the Monadnock region. That's been where it's been so 
so hard hit, you guys out there. Over 20 inches in some spots. Really just remarkable to see the snow piling up in these communities. There has certainly been less to the north, but it's still coming down in areas across uh, Carroll, Grafton, and even Coas County. I'll zoom you down. Look at where we're seeing these darker shades of the blue and the purple out by Jaffrey, Milford. This is where we probably have some bands upward of an inch or two per hour coming down yet again, and it continuously is adding on and adding to the weight on all those power lines and tree limbs. Heavy snow now through Rochester on the south side of Dover. So Route 16 right now, if you're thinking of even traveling from, say, Portsmouth, the Newfields area, and up into, say, Rochester, and it's going to be slow going with the snow, reducing visibility and already accumulating on the roadways there. And continuing up Route 16 into Ossipee, Freedom, light to moderate snow. Taking a look now, the I-89 stretch, New London, Grantham, some light snow, and at times picking up in intensity. It looks like down in Newbury, that's the case. And then right over the White Mountains, we're seeing some of the heavier snow amounts. Lighter stuff, at least at the moment, through Lincoln, Woodstock, and through Franconia Notch up into Littleton and lesser amounts have been reported in that part of the state too. Just simply due to proximity, the closer you are to the center of this low pressure system, the heavier the snow has been. But it really is just a remarkable storm to see on satellite. It has almost that eye feature. There's lightning all along the backside of it here as it's kind of looping around. And Matt was right, the track of this thing and how it's going to kind of what we call retrograde or go from the east to the west over the next few hours, that's contributing to all of this heavy snow and how long lived it has been and will continue to be. You know, we still have many hours to go with the snow falling because it's now backing in to the Gulf of Maine. And so we continue to see these bands just coming right off of the Atlantic. So here's the hour by hour forecast for Manchester. Obviously, we've got alert weather over the next few hours, but it does look like things slow down a bit once we get beyond, say, 11 o'clock, midnight, maybe even stop for a time. But I think, you know, the real shutoff time is probably about 7, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for most locations. This is looking at the Futurecast computer model. It is even possible, by the way, out at the seacoast that we get a little bit of mixing, or at least the snowflakes are not those big fluffy snowflakes. Instead, maybe more more of the fine particles that are coming down or even mixing a little bit with sleet or rain that is possible as that low pressure system actually gets super close to the actual coastline inland areas we're still snowing at a good clip all throughout the evening overnight and then finally after about midnight into the early morning hours it's much lighter snow coming down. So in terms of additional snowfall, we're still piling it up, up through Jaffrey Route 202 and into the Sunapee area. That'll be the jackpot zone for sure. And then about two to four inches in the rest of this blue area.